afternoon, everyone. My name is Togozani Lamini, and um, I'm here at the, the GCA3 conference, um, which is taking place in Johannesburg, South Africa. And um, right now, I'm sitting with Chris Dickens, who is the, um, the head of office for EMI Southern Africa in Pretoria, just to discuss some of the one of the issues that um, have been uh, coming out frequently during the discussions in the conference, which is the SDGs. Good, e good evening, Chris. Uh, good afternoon, Chris, and uh, welcome you to to the interview. Thank you, Tokozani. So, so the, the the Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs, um, it's probably one of the biggest things that's that's hit the scene for a long time. And uh, it was interesting to hear Ban Ki Moon, the the Secretary General of the United Nations, when he introduced the SDGs, he said it's the biggest thing to happen to the world since the formation of the UN itself, because it's the first time that society is actually sitting down and getting together to chart a way forward for its own survival. So these things, these Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs, are really, really important. And um, how is um IMI involved in these SDGs? So, so IMI, which is the International Water Management Institute, we, we, because our interest is water in relation to agriculture, we've been involved in, in uh, the water SDGs particularly, and several of the staff have been on the task teams writing the indicators uh, for the water SDGs, quite a few of the different SDGs. And I know that, okay, there are a lot of countries that are involved in these um, SDGs. And um, um, what, which countries or what has been the process um, in getting countries involved in these SDGs? What's really important about the, the SDGs is that um, they, the countries, well, politically, it's, it's completely unacceptable for the United Nations to, <coughs> excuse me, to have a, like a top-down, big brother kind of approach to the SDGs. So they're allowing countries to have maximum involvement and so that ultimately it's up to countries how they, want, how they participate in the SDGs. So the United Nations is providing guidelines and guideline methods and so on, and, but countries, by having signed on, they've already committed that they are going to participate. But just how they participate is going to be very much up to the countries. But ultimately what's going to have to happen is that countries will have to actually monitor, collect the data for all these 169 different targets. The countries will have to themselves go around, collect the data, and those targets range from sort of social issues, economic issues, and environmental issues, and there's going to be a lot of investment that's actually required by each country to actually collect that, that data. Um, what's also being allowed is that, you know, some countries just don't have much capacity, so they're like what's recognized as they are like essential uh, indicators which they really must monitor. And then if a country has got greater capacity, then they can take on more and more complicated um, indicators and which provide more information. Um, but then they, they have to then feed this information back to the UN and it's going to be done on a four yearly basis. So every four years they will have to actually provide this data back to the UN who will then collate these big um, global reports. But, but at the end of the day, the important thing is that it's up to a country to monitor how sustainable its own uh, practices are, and then to change their policy and to change their practices and to change the way that they, they, they do things on the ground in that country. This is not just about reporting at a global level. It's about, ultimately, about each country changing the way that it does things on the ground so that we can actually head towards a sustainable future. Because at the moment, society is just nowhere near sustainable. We're heading one way, and the Sustainable Development Goals are the first time that we just might turn the corner and actually head towards a sustainable future for society. And tell me, how are these um, SDGs going to, um, to impact agriculture according to your view? Well, goal number two, there's 17 goals, and goal number two is about food security. So food security is obviously regarded as one of the most important um, aspects of sustainability. And so there are a number of different areas. And then you know, our particular angle on that is water. So how does water actually contribute to food security through irrigation and water resources and so on? So there are a number of, of food security um, uh, indicators. 
how hungry are people, how much, how, how um, productive is agriculture, are people wasting resources, or is it actually being productive, um, how much uh, resources are still left in the environment that to be used, because we can't sort of go beyond the point where we're actually using too many resources that it's no longer renewable. Um, so there are a number of different uh, indicators which will be keeping tabs on, on agriculture in its relation to people's hunger and food security and in relation to the actual resources itself. And then there's, there's the climate change aspect as well. So um, monitoring the impact that climate change is actually having on agriculture and having on, on food security. Thank you very much. Uh, there was Chris Dickens from the International Water Management Institute. Thank you.